My dear sister, I'm afraid I'm interrupting your solitary reverie. You are indeed. But it doesn't follow that the interruption must be unwelcome. I'd be sorry if it were. You and I were always good friends. True. Then, shall we take a turn together, sister? I was surprised to see Darcy in town last month. We, um, we passed each other several times. I wonder what he could be doing there. Perhaps preparing for the wedding with Mr. Berg. Yes, yes, perhaps. Must have been something particular to take him there at this time of year. Undoubtedly. Did you see him while you were at Lambton? I thought I understood from the gardeners that you had. Yes, he introduced us to his sister. Did you like her? Yes, I did like her very much indeed. Well, I have heard indeed that she has uncommonly improved within this last year or two. When I last saw her, she was not very promising. I'm glad you liked her. I hope she will turn out well. I dare say she will. She's got over the most trying age. Did you go by the village of Kimpton? I don't recollect that we... Oh, I mention it because it was the living I should have had. And how should you have liked making sermons? Exceedingly well. I did hear that there was a time when sermon-making was not so palatable to you as it seems to be at present. That you actually declared your resolution of never taking orders and were compensated accordingly. Well... Oh, come, Mr. Wickham, we are brother and sister, you know. Let us not quarrel about the past. Refuse to go in any case. Oh, hold your tongue, girl. Who asked you? Oh, Lydia, <laughs> you will write to me often, won't you? Well, I don't know. We married women don't have much time for writing. <laughs> My sisters may write to me. They will have nothing better to do as I shall. <laughs> oh, Lydia. Oh, Mr. Wickham, take care of my girl. I shall, ma'am, for the very best of my ability. And thank you, ma'am, and to you, sir, for your continued and unstinting kindness and hospitality. And to you, my dear sisters-in-law, and now as dear to me as sisters ever could be. But the carriage awaits. Duty and honour call me to the north. And so come, my dear. Let us say not farewell, but as the French have it, au revoir. <laughs> He's as fine a fellow as ever I saw. He simples and smirks and makes love to us all. Oh, I'm prodigiously proud of him. I defy even Sir William Lucas himself to produce such a son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> 